Welcome to the Air Gun Show. This week I'm taking a look at a brilliant night vision add-on from John Rothery Wholesale that will convert your normal day scope to infrared for nighttime hunting. But first up, I'm heading out on what turns out to be a phenomenal rabbiting session. Right, I'm out on a rabbiting permission this evening. Uh, I've got a lovely, warm, sunny evening, and I'm expecting it to be a pretty good session. Um, I haven't actually shot here for quite a long time. The rabbits here were just pretty much wiped out a couple of years ago. Um, hit them far harder than myxomatosis. I'm fairly convinced that it was the viral hemorrhagic disease. Um, just wiped them out almost overnight. But this summer, they appear to have made a real comeback. Now, while I'm pretty excited about that, it's obviously very bad news for the landowner. The paddocks here now are getting hammered by rabbits, and apart from losing grass to them, he's also concerned that the burrows are gonna to start to pose a danger to livestock. So he's asked me to thin them out as much as I can. I came out for a quick look round yesterday evening. Sure enough, there were quite a few rabbits about. So as I said, we should be in for a few shots. In terms of the kit that I'm using, I've got the FX Impact Mark II. 2.2 caliber, FAC rated, and that's set on 30 foot-pounds at the moment, which I think is just about perfect with a 16 grain pellet. Now, by not ramping up the power quite as high as I could with this gun, it not only keeps it quiet, but also reduces muzzle flip, so it keeps it much more accurate, but it just gives me a little bit more grunt and reach than I would have with the sub-12 foot-pound version. Uh, the scope that I'm using is the Hawk Sidewinder 30SF um, and I've got that in the 4.5 to 14 by 44 version which is a pretty good sort of do anything sort of range for air gun shooting. Um, I actually reviewed this scope in the previous episode, really liked it. I've had a couple more sessions out on the range with it now and I just thought I'd give it a proper try out in the field to see how it fares. I'm expecting it to do pretty well. Um, as ever, the scope is held on with sports match scope mounts. I've also got the Eagle Vision uh, GoPro camera attachment on here, and that's basically so I can film through the scope and save Nikki from messing around too much trying to get onto the rabbits with the big camera and potentially spooking them. Um, it's going to be an ambush session. I'm going to be on my belly shooting off the bipod. So what I'm going to do now is get on over there and get settled in. Right, I don't want to do too much talking now that we're in position, but I've just kicked off with the usual bit of range finding just to a couple of prominent markers, so I don't have to mess about with it as and when the rabbits come out. But we've, we've got really lucky up in this corner. Um, first of all, it's put us into the shade. So I'm out of that sun, which I have to say was really, really hot out in the open this evening. Um, but also this corner is fenced off because it's been re-sown and uh, it's a bit nearer to the disturbance of the farm and the rabbits seem to be leaving this side alone which is quite handy because I've got some fairly long grass here to tuck into. It's given me a little bit of cover around me um, but it doesn't extend out too far so I don't really have to worry too much about the pellet clearing it. Um, once we get to the other side of where it's fenced off the field's been grazed off by the stock and I've got nice short grass where I'm going to be targeting the rabbits. It's quite a narrow field so None of the shots should be an extremely long reach. There's a little sort of slightly wooded area and that bit of cover seems to be where most of their burrows are. So I've positioned myself to be able to hopefully get fairly comfortable shots at that area.
that was a great start. Um, there are actually two rabbits out then. The other one disappeared at the sound of the shot, but the one I was aiming at was really cleanly killed. Um, but about 30 meters, which with this setup just needs a little bit of hold under, but like I say, really good solid connection there. Um, the area where the rabbits are actually emerging at the moment is still in full sun, sunlight and it's still looking pretty bright over there, but if they're coming out when it's in the, these conditions in the sunlight, it should just get busier and busier over there as it gets thrown into the shade of the trees. Well, first off, apologies, because I didn't think to fine tune the focus on that one, so sorry if it looks a bit blurry. A um, little bit further, that one was probably 50 meters, which bang on zero for this one, so I just had to aim straight at it, and again, it just rolled it over. I just hope you get the chance to see that fairly clearly. Well, that was one for those of you that think I hit everything. Um, misgaged the range slightly there, didn't give that one enough hold under. Consequently, missed over the top. And the rabbit got away unscathed. Uh, I don't want to make that mistake again. No mistakes that time. Uh, that rabbit was just sat bolt upright. Shot, I got it dead right that time. Hit it really solidly, rolled it over. Um, the good thing now is also that the main area is now in the shade of the woods. And that's usually the time at which the rabbits really start to come out in numbers. So hopefully it will just get better now.
That was a nice little flurry. Um, it always used to be the case here that the activity would spike after the main area fell into the shade of the trees and that certainly seems to be the case again this evening. That last one was actually pretty close. It couldn't have been much more than 20 metres, which is pretty much where the pellet first crosses through the line of sight on this setup. Um, so I barely had to give that shot any hold under. Re another really nice straightforward shot. Another one, that one was about 40 metres. As you can probably see, we've got a lovely still evening and it's the sort of conditions that make shots like that very straightforward, especially with a setup like this. Now it is starting to slow down a little bit now, but I'm not in the least bit surprised. Must have shot nine or 10 rabbits. That one was tucked away just in the cover there and it was actually quite gloomy over there. So I thought I'd just switch on the Sidewinder's illuminated reticle just for a bit more contrast. And I have to say, it did the trick. Um, I'm gonna make that one the last rabbit, mostly because the gate on the access road to these paddocks on the track gets locked and we don't wanna get stuck in here. Um, but it's been a terrific session. Now, like I said at the outset, I was expecting to get a few shots, but it's been really prolific. There've been plenty of rabbits about. They look like good, clean, healthy rabbits as well, which is great because I want them for the pot. Obviously it's primarily a pest control job, but if I can get some free range meat for the freezer, even better. The kits performed brilliantly. The Impact Mark II, I mean, that's been earning its keep for ages now. It's a fantastic gun, but as I said, I wanted to give the Sidewinder a proper trying out in the field and quite frankly it couldn't have done better. It's always a slight hindrance having the scope cam on but it's done absolutely great so I'm going to get those rabbits picked up and we're going to head for home. A wonderful session on the rabbits there and it looks like there are plenty more to be had. Next up I'm taking a look at a brilliant infrared night vision add-on from John Rothery Wholesale. Night vision gear has never been so popular and it's never been so affordable and easy to use. The new Night Visor range distributed by John Rothery Wholesale is a great example of night vision kit that's really well suited to air gun shooting. Now this is the Night Visor VP200 XTR which converts normal conventional daytime optics for night vision shooting and it retails for £549.95. While that price is impressive, there is actually a similar model with an external screen which costs about £150 less. Now I'm hoping to take a proper look at that one in the future but let's focus on this one for now. Now as you can see it's pretty compact, it weighs about 350 grams so it's not going to adversely affect the balance and handling of your air gun. So the big gain of a night vision unit like this 
is that you don't need a second gun for your night vision setup. You simply pop this on to convert your typical, your normal scope, and all your aim points remain exactly the same as usual. Now this one is really easy to attach. It comes with an attachment section which fits over the end of your scope and it actually comes supplied with various different size sleeves to ensure a secure attachment to scopes with a 35mm to 45mm ocular diameter. Now once you've got this piece attached, the main unit simply snaps off, uh, twists on and off via a bayonet type system which is really quick and easy to use. Once you've got it attached, give the standby button a long press for about one second and it switches on. Another long press will switch it off or you can give it a quick press to put the unit into sleep mode. Now this is really handy for extending battery life and another quick press gets you straight back into action. Now the unit comes supplied with two rechargeable batteries which you can charge on board using the supplied USB data and power lead. With the night visor switched on, you need to do a couple of things to get it properly set up. First, you use the ocular focusing ring at the rear to get the display pin sharp for your eye. Next, you use the objective lens focusing dial to bring the reticle of the scope into sharp relief on the internal screen. Now, you only need to do those two things once. Once you're up and running, the only adjustment you need to make is using the parallax dial on your scope to bring the target into sharp focus the same as usual. The controls are really simple. The bottom button shifts the zoom up and down. Now I got the best sight picture by leaving it on its lowest setting and just using the zoom on my scope. Um, the left button shifts between full color day mode and the monochrome night vision mode. It also enables you to toggle between three different levels of infrared illumination. The night visor has its own onboard 850NM infrared illuminator. Now I was initially a bit concerned about it being obscured by the scope and particularly the turrets, but it doesn't seem to be a problem at all. Now back to the controls, once you've fitted a micro SD card, uh, the button on the right captures still images with a quick press and video with a long press, which is great for capturing and sharing the action. The middle button opens up the menu, which enables you to adjust settings uh, such as screen brightness, video and photo settings, video playback, uh, date and time, and much, much more. Now, of all the features on this unit, I think the ability to record video is really the one that shooters are gonna really appreciate. More and more air gun shooters are wanting to record that sort of scope cam through the scope action, and this unit enables you to do it in infrared by night and in full color by day. Another very clever feature is Wi-Fi connectivity, which enables you to connect the VP200 XTR to your phone. Now, you download the free app, and not only are you then able to use your phone to control the device, you can also see the sight picture on your phone screen. Now, the kit even includes a phone mount, so you can pop your phone on top of it and actually shoot using your phone as a sighting device and shoot head up. In terms of real full-on field testing, I've not actually had a chance to take the night visor out hunting yet. Um, I have put its runtime to the test though, and the supplied battery setup will give you certainly up to about five hours, but of course, if you're using features like the infrared illuminator, Wi-Fi and recording, that is going to make an additional drain that will reduce runtime. Um, detection range is stated as being a very healthy 200 meters. Again, I've not had a chance to put it to the test in the field, 
But just going through the fairly basic testing that I've been doing out on my garden range, I can say that this setup is more than up to tackling rats and rabbits after dark. So that's the Night Visor VP200 XTR night vision add-on. Apart from being comparatively affordable, being able to convert your typical daytime scope to night vision also makes it extremely versatile. The fact that you can use this unit to record video either in darkness at night or in complete full colour by day is a real bonus. I think this setup is going to be extremely popular with air gun shooters. Don't miss the award winning air gun shooter magazine. It's packed with hunting features, reviews, tactics and insight to help you become an even more successful shooter. Get your copy today in shops or online. I'm afraid that's all we've got time for this week, but as ever, we'll be back again in a fortnight. Thank you for watching and please don't forget to like us on Facebook and follow us on Twitter. And if you aren't already a member of the BASC, it's time you joined the organisation that works to promote and protect your sport.